my name is Jason Babel. I'm the Vice President of Operations for Enchant. I would like to thank you all for taking the time to be here this morning. So Enchant is an immersive light experiences that uses awe and wonder to create magical memories for individuals who choose to participate. When I think about my own experiences in tradition, I think about being in the woods with my uncle and cutting down trees for the holiday season. I think about being pulled behind a car with a sled, and I know you can't do that anymore. But those are the experiences that I remember from those holidays. And our brand purpose is to create opportunities for magical memories, for individuals to build tradition and share those experiences with loved ones. In 2019, we were here at Nationals Park and we presented The Great Search. And it was an overwhelming response from Washingtonians and the community around. And I am absolutely thrilled to be back here in 2021 to present The Mischievous Elf here at Nats Park from November 26th to January 2nd. Now included in this experience are gonna be the fan favorites, of course the maze with hundreds of thousands of lights. We'll have the local artisan market, our meandering ice skating trail where individuals can try ice skating or master it for themselves, as well as of course the power couple, Mr. and Mrs. Claus. Now, when I think about our experience here in DC, it was really important for us as an organization not simply to be an event in D.C., but to be a D.C. event. And for us, that means being involved in the community and really fostering community engagement. So for every opportunity for us, we're looking to hire local, support local, and work with local small businesses. That means, of course, working with institutions like Ben's Chili Bowl, who are here today, who will be providing delicious flavors to the Washingtonians, as well as the visitors who are coming to enjoy the experience as well. In our holiday market, we're always looking to support local, where we're looking to small businesses who might not have an opportunity to have a brick and mortar, or looking for ways to leverage their existing so that they can take advantage of the hundreds of thousands of guests that will be calling Nats Park the headquarters of their holiday experience. We also work with local charities and nonprofits. Our goal is not just to support them with tickets that they can use for fundraisers or to serve under underserved communities, but also to provide direct donations to those nonprofits so that we can have an even greater impact within the community. We're working with the Nationals Philanthropies as well. We're focusing on family, hunger relief, and education components through matching campaigns that will allow those individuals and those institutions to take advantage of the opportunity that Enchant offers, as well as to enjoy the holiday season as well. So we, we truly try and prioritize all of these local partnerships within the community. And of course, that also means hiring local. For us, the Enchant experience is an opportunity for individuals to come and learn a new trade. Um, these are carpenters, these are marketers, these are build uh, and skilled labor individuals. As well, it provides a different opportunity for individuals to see an alternate path to a successful career through event production that they might not have seen through other traditional career paths. So for us this year, we're looking to hire over 200 seasonal employees throughout the experience, and it can be a gamut of those um, uh, opportunities that I mentioned earlier. We're really looking forward to leveraging the Washingtonian community, and we've been overwhelmed with the types of skills and attitudes that individuals have in this community. In addition to that, we like to focus on tourism and economic impact. So for us, you know, we are trying to make a destination of this experience. As Washington is already a destination unto itself with the layered addition of the Enchant experience, we're confident that over 32% of the individuals who will attend this year from the 26th to the 2nd will be coming from outside of that 50 mile radius, which we know is very impactful when people are coming in to buy gifts, spend money at restaurants, hotel nights, and we're pleased that those numbers would be welcoming here, but we also want to add in that we, we traditionally have over 15,000 hotel night stays when we were looking at our event and the impact in its community. In our most recent economic impact study that was conducted in 2019, we had a combined indirect and direct impact of over $33 million for a single enchant experience. And we're really pleased to be able to partner with these local stakeholders to try and beat that record that we set in 2019. Now for us, the, the DC is Open campaign is fantastic. There's still a lot of opportunities here. 
We're still hiring individuals. There's a few places left in our marketplace. And of course, tickets are available at EnchantChristmas.com. Really excited to be here again. I can't tell you how, how overwhelming it feels to be back in live events. And with that, it's my distinct honor to introduce to you Deputy Mayor John Falcicchio. Uh, great job, Jason. And um, I asked Jason when we came in the room if this is what his living room looks like, uh, and I imagine it is. But uh, in addition to the great uh, uh, fixtures that you see here, uh, enchant also means business, right? So uh, Mayor Bowser sent me here today to say that D.C. is open uh, and that, yes, we do need a little bit of Christmas right now. Um, we need it not just for uh, the opportunity, as Jason alluded to, to come back together again, but also uh, for the uh, economic impact that it has. Um, and so one of the things that we know is that before the pandemic, there were about 802,000 jobs in the District of Columbia. During the pandemic, uh, we lost about 70,000 jobs. Now, the good news is that we've started to regain those jobs back, and we've seen them uh, grow to about 600, uh, excuse me, 762,000 jobs, right? So that still means, though, that we're down about 40,000 jobs uh, from before the pandemic. Now, the industry that took the biggest hit uh, in the District of Columbia was the hospitality industry. So uh, accommodations, um, restaurants, and then, of course, leisure activities. Now, if you came to Enchant, now that's the tough news, right? But if you came to Enchant in 2019 uh, and you brought your family uh, from uh, the region or even outside the region, uh, there's some new things for you to see here in D.C. Uh, when you come this year. Uh, so there is a new uh, Eisenhower Memorial. Uh, there's a new Franklin Park. Uh, and if you haven't had a chance to check out uh, Black Lives Matter Plaza, that's actually been turned from a mural into a monument. Uh, so there's something new for everyone to come see uh, when they come plan their visit for Enchant uh, to make sure that they have an opportunity to see the new things around the city uh, that have happened since 2019. So even if you came in 2019, Jason said there's going to be some new things to see here in the ballpark. Uh, there are definitely new things to see around D.C. So our hope is that families will plan a visit uh, to come and to stay in D.C. Uh, when they do. Uh, and we also know that uh, people are starting to do their shopping a little bit earlier. Uh, each and every year, uh, the Christmas holiday season, uh, the shopping usually starts around um, uh, you know, Thanksgiving and the days uh, thereafter. But we know that that actually started earlier. So what Mayor Bowser has set up is a way for D.C. residents and those in the region and beyond to actually support uh, D.C. merchants. Uh, and that website is shopinthedistrict.com. Uh, we're going to be relaunching shopinthedistrict.com a little bit later this month. Uh, so when, when people come to Enchant, we'll make sure that we promote shopinthedistrict.com so that people can bring uh, an authentic piece of D.C. Uh, back uh, to uh, either their home in D.C. or their home in the region or around the country. And it's important because uh, too often we see people come to D.C., they visit us, and they leave with a CIA or an FBI T-shirt from one of those stands. Those are great. Uh, but there's also a lot of great uh, 202 uh, paraphernalia. And we have great makers in D.C. who make all sorts of products, from candles to leather goods uh, and beyond. So if you want to do your holiday shopping, I hope that you'll come to Enchant, uh, that you'll check out uh, support for our local merchants. And if there's something that you just can't carry with you, uh, that you want to get shipped to you, uh, Shop in the District will help you do it. So shopinthedistrict.com. Um, so really, this is about uh, kicking off the holiday season, uh, but it's really about the economic impact that it'll have, uh, not just uh, during these weeks ahead, uh, but in order to get us uh, to become what we know we will be, which is the District of Comebacks. Uh, so really excited uh, that we're here in Nats Park uh, one of the experiences that people have when they come to Nationals Park is to have the quintessential uh, D.C. food, uh, and that's our half smoke. Uh, and the Ali family has been uh, doing it for well over 50 years. Actually, is it 60? 53? 63. 63 years uh, serving uh, half smokes uh, on U Street. But what's really excited is that they have locations across the district now including at our convention center uh, and right here in Nationals Park. So when families uh, come out to Enchant, 
uh, later this month and throughout December. Uh, we hope that they come hungry because Ben's Chili Bowl will be here uh, to uh, make sure that they're fed well. And the person who leads the family uh, is Virginia Ali. Uh, so I'll welcome her up to the podium now. And Beta Ali is coming up as well. It's a real pleasure to be here again. It's a pleasure to uh, welcome and one, chant back. Uh, just remove this one? No, no, no. Oh. Here, let me just pull it down. See this one. Sorry. I'm a little short. No, the microphone's tall. Oh, <laughs> I like that, John. <laughs> Is that, how's that, guys? Try that, Mom. So it's a real pleasure to be here, and a real pleasure to welcome and chant back to our beautiful city. You know, it's, it meant so much to us in 2019, and it was so fabulous, so, oh my gosh, so, you know, everybody that we talked to, everybody enjoyed it and told another family that this is something you got to do. It's like a fantasy land. It's, it's a dream place to come to, and, and I don't know, I, I, I came more than one time because it was so beautiful. And, of course, we offered our Enchant Half Smokes and beef dogs and turkey dogs, and we'll do that again this year. But it's so good for the city. It's so good for this wonderful community. And, you know, we've got so much going on in the city, as John has said. And we're growing and we're open, and the Chili Bowl is open, every one of them now. So we're very happy to be a part of this and to invite our guests from across the community and across the suburban areas. And as far away, we had friends come all the way down from New York to see this, to see the Washington version, because it was so beautiful and so enjoyable for families. And the Chili Bowl, of course, is always a part of our Washington community, and we've always wanted to be that, and we continue to do that. And we're happy to be here, and we thank all of you for being here. Please come on out and enjoy our beautiful enchant here at Robert, our wonderful baseball park. Vita, would you like to? I think you said it all, but I just wanted to say when in the enchant team contacted us this year to let us know they're coming back to our beautiful city, we were thrilled because Mom has been creating magical moments at Ben's for over 63 years and where traditions are made with loved ones. So it was a perfect synergy when we understood when Enchant first came and asked us to be their community partner. It was a no-brainer mm -hmm. to us. And um, we just love for, you know, the, the holiday season. You just get to, you know, we're going through a lot of difficult times. And we can just take a breather and say, D.C. is open. Enjoy. Enjoy your loved ones. Enjoy the lights. And come out and see the, what, the elf is this time. And, of, co of course, the um, Mr. and Mrs. Santa. But mom, um, thank you for helping us continue the tradition of magical moments, and we're thrilled to partner with Enchant. Thank you all so much. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. I think we're going to take some questions. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, questions? Questions? Any questions? Yes, the Grinch. <laughs> <laughs> Can you remind us how many people came through? And yeah, you want to come through that, yeah. And then also, can you talk about what, if any, COVID safety protocols might be in place uh, this time around? Sure. So, so in, that back up. tilting it back up. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. So in 2019, we had about 350,000 people come to the experience over a 30-day period. This year, our COVID protocols, we're following the health, local healthcare mandates and guidelines. Um, we have instituted an arrival window system similar to what we had in 2019 to reduce any overcrowding. The experience is largely outdoors. Uh, when individuals are participating in activities indoors, they'll be required to wear masks if they were to and over. If you are unvaccinated, we request that you would stay masked throughout the entire experience. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Other questions? I've got an off topic for the deputy mayor. OK, I'm making my naughty and nice list, so go ahead. <laughs> Uh, I'm wondering about, you know, yesterday was the deadline for mm -hmm. DC public school staff and teachers and student athletes, and your your office released the data on that. 
What should parents take from the fact that it's not at 100% yet? Uh, I know from following the, with the timeline with DC firefighters, you know, the direction that we're going, but what would your message uh, to DC school parents be when they see this data that's coming out today? Sure. So uh, throughout the pandemic, we've always led with education, compliance, and enforcement. So our message to the workforce is that we really want you uh, to understand the importance of getting vaccinated. Uh, we want you to comply what we've laid out. Uh, and then if uh, there is not compliance, we have to then talk about enforcement. But for right now, what we're doing is we're looking at the data, uh, which shows, uh, for those of you who don't know, about 79% of DCPS employees uh, are vaccinated. 85% uh, of teachers are. Um, and so it's really important that we keep uh, pushing to make sure uh, that more uh, employees get vaccinated uh, and that uh, they do so in a timely fashion. And then to parents and uh, students, uh, we want you to uh, do what is important uh, for you and your family too, which is to get vaccinated. Uh, we know that there's uh, going to be hopefully some positive news today. Uh, about vaccines being opened up from to five to 11 year olds. Uh, we're working with uh, community partners uh, throughout the district to make sure that we're ready uh, for that as well. So we want to continue to encourage employees to follow uh, the rules. Uh, it's really important that they do. That's the fundamental value that we teach in school that you've got to follow the rules. Uh, so we hope that the adults will take the lead and do that. Uh, and we don't rush to enforcement in a way that uh, will be disruptive to what happens uh, in the classrooms or in the schools. Uh, so we've got to figure out what the data tells us, uh, who uh, needs to comply, uh, and it's really important that we do that, not just for their own good, but the good of that school community. And so have you been able to look at the data to tell if there's any trends, like the 15% of teachers who are not vaccinated, are they from, are they just spread out equally through all the schools? Do you see clusters of them, anything like that that you've noticed? Yeah, so DCPS now is analyzing that data uh, in order to give us an update, so I'll have to defer to them. And then one, my last question on this, Montgomery County Council was voting today on the fate of the mask mandate in Montgomery County, your neighbor. Um, what is happening, what can we expect here in the district? I know last year at this time with holidays, we saw a spike uh, in cases. Where are we as far as situationally with the mask mandate here in D.C.? Yeah, so uh, uh, each weekday we put out uh, the number of new cases, uh, the number of new lives lost, unfortunately, uh, and then also uh, some really important metrics by which we uh, see our progress on really crushing the virus. Uh, and over the course of October, we saw that those uh, metrics have improved. Uh, so we're looking to D.C. Health uh, to give us a sense of when we think uh, the mask mandate might be lifted. Um, and really what is uh, positive is that those health metrics have improved, more people have gotten vaccinated, and hopefully by the end of today, uh, we'll see the vaccine open up to even more uh, of our community, namely the five to 11 year olds. Is there any crystal ball timeline on when you might get to that point, when the Department of Health might get to So I'm standing on a stage with a lot of lights, but I don't have a crystal ball uh, for you. <laughs> Any other questions? Sure. Yes. Well, not for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, forgive me for being new to Enchant. I was not able to attend sure. 2019. Um, I get that this year's uh, theme is mischief and hell, and that theme from last year. But uh, how is it? Uh, it's a light, light thing, right? So you're Correct. working through lights and ice skating. How is the also incorporated? I'm like, that is a light style thing. Yeah, so. Um, Eddie is, is, our, is the character that we've created. He's Eddie the Elf. So in the 2019 story, The Great Search, um, the reindeer have escaped. And in order to save Christmas, you're navigating the maze and using a scratch card to retrieve those reindeers and save Christmas. Eddie is typically the individual who is causing the mischief. Um, this year, you're following the story of Eddie and uh, the presents that go missing. So Eddie has done something similar to a Curious George type character where he means well, but you know, gets into trouble. Um, so you're navigating the maze this year. You'll be finding different presents um, throughout that maze experience, also using a scratch card um, tool in order to, to collect them all, so to speak. Um, so the new element components there is uh, it's different activations in terms of RGB lighting. We have a, an LED dance floor that we've brought in. There is a new maze entrance experience, a new maze exit experience, as well as different activations throughout the stadium to try and transform you more into that immersive experience of the world of Enchant. Yeah, I do have something to add to that. 
Please. Yeah, I actually do. I've got something to add to that. Is that uh, I was here in 2019, uh, and I'll say about the maze is it's not easy. Uh, and it takes some time to do, so you should definitely uh, plan out the time. Uh, be ready to check out Ben's Chili Bowl, because uh, the maze is not easy. And I think now with Eddie being what we're seeking, the mischief uh, that we're trying to catch up on, uh, it may be even harder. Uh, so really uh, encourage families to really plan out uh, to spend you know, a day or half a day here, uh, because the, the maze was, uh, was challenging. Um, and so I hope that this year, it's a little bit easier, maybe? I believe in you. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe our confidence has risen. So uh, I would say that it's a, it's a great experience for folks, but allow the time to really experience it all, too. So to come to the ballpark, come hungry, because uh, Ben's will be here. Uh, but really, it is a great opportunity for people to see uh, the ballpark in a way that they haven't before. Perfect. All right. I think we're going to try some half smokes. Sounds good. Okay.